So much good stuff on today's episode. We are never not working talking about the bipocalypse that is coming in week seven. So many important fantasy options will be gone. We want the Foot Clan to be aware of it. We're breaking down all the matchups and we've got our starts of the week and most important, we break out some great accents. I mean, some world class accents on today's episode. You don't want to miss it. Like the video, subscribe, enjoy the show. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology available at walmart.com. We also want to thank Harry's for supporting the show. Guys, have you looked in the mirror lately? I mean, like seriously, Jason. Every day. Have you looked in the mirror? That beard you grew out last year is, Jason. A, is, a, is a hot new thing. For everybody, the beard, right? And yeah. then, and then uh, it's too hot outside now, and you want to tame that beard, and you want to get yourself some Harry's, and you want to uh, enjoy the beardless life. Sometimes the kids, they, you know, yeah, you want to cuddle. Sure, but uh, but you're scratchy. Uh, shower, shave, and one more thing. That's what you do every morning, and Harry's can help you make two of the three easier. They do nothing for the third one at all. Uh, but, uh, look, I've been a Harry's user for a long, long time. Indeed. Long time supporter of this show. Lots of refills, lots of razors, and, uh, they're the best and I'm quite pleased. And, uh, you do not have to choose between a great shave and a fair price because Harry's gives you both. There has never been a better time to try Harry's. Go to harrys.com slash footballers. Uh, get their starter set for just three bucks. It's a hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed. So you got nothing to lose. Go to harrys.com slash footballers right now. Get this special offer. That's H A R R Y S dot com slash footballers. Welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Mm. It's football time. For one team. <laughs> Not expecting a tight matchup tonight? I, I think it should be a good game, actually. Hurts, Hurts can get it done. Yeah. For fantasy. It's a weird one. I mean, it's, it's a shared fantasy for Philadelphia that... Like, they could play fantasy football and then fantasize that their team could actually beat Tampa Bay. Take that, Philadelphia! <laughs> Mike uh, stands alone, putting you on blast. No, I think, uh, yeah, obviously, we previewed the game yesterday. And, you know, you go into every week thinking the favorite's going to win, right? I mean, <laughs> that's how it works in the NFL. And uh, there have been quarters here or halves here where mm -hmm. the Philadelphia offense looks like he can get it done or their defense looks like he can get it done. So who knows? Their We've been getting is, great primetime games. Yeah. Oh man, we sure have. Their defense is very confounding because sometimes it looks legitimately great and sometimes it looks legitimately awful. Not like in between like, oh, they're okay. It's like they're either shutting fools down or they're like, I have no idea what our <laughs> scheme is here. We have so much to talk about today. Injuries to catch you up on. The fantasy forecast part one. So we'll be in the week six matchups, news, like I said. And then starts of the week and the mm. boom, boom kicker. Mm. The story continues. Oh, I cannot um, wait. What did we do last week? He had been dancing. Yeah, we were. Oh, we yeah, were you did dancing, the Charleston. And then I went, uh, went to a fancy dinner last week. So that's where we left mm, off with the right. uh, narrative. Yeah. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Jason at Jason FFL. My I hope dad, he FF skips Hitman. out on the bill. <laughs> that, that may be the next <laughs> part of the story. Um, and Netflix has come calling for the Boom Boom Kicker series, right? Yeah, I it's going to be huge. Uh, <laughs> Squid game levels. <laughs> follow me at Andy Holloway. Jointhefoot.com is the uh, fantasy football community with the extra weekly show and the perks. And we had a good time hanging out on Green Room yesterday. Mm -hmm. With uh, Beb? <laughs> right with Bev, with Bev, and uh, let's jump into some news. Or actually, before the news, yes, let's get working. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at Walmart. 
It's time for Bipocalypse. I don't like that song at all. No, it's kind of it's sung happily, but it was it's a not terrible. Catchy. It's Bills. a terrible. Uh, yeah, Cowboys, oh. Vikings, Steelers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chargers, Jags. I looked at my dynasty team yesterday, <laughs> and I looked at the Bipocalypse next week, and the first seven players on my team are on a bye. Yeah, six teams on bye is a large amount. Those are those weeks where you've got a plan. But it just so happens this year that the six teams are chock full of fantasy relevant players. Only the Jaguars are out here. They're like, you know, wanting to be part of this great group of uh, fantasy relevant teams. So this is the time for fantasy players to this is the time to plan ahead a full week, not just for this coming matchup. I know you got bye weeks and you got things you got to do for this week, but you need to plan on your waiver wires right now for what to do about next week. Take a look at your roster. You might be fine. You might be, but you might be like, oh my gosh, I have no quarterback the next week. And guess what? When you have no quarterback, neither does the Josh Allen, the Dak uh, Prescott, the uh, uh, Herbert. Those managers, like, they're all going to be looking for quarterbacks. So grab them now if you can. Mm -hmm. So at quarterback, you've got Josh Stallion, Dak, Herbert, Cousins, Lawrence, Big Ben gone. Here are the names to pick up. Ryan Tannehill. Yes. He plays against Buffalo this week. He, do, he probably doesn't have Julio. Nobody's playing him. He they Cut him. He's on the waiver. Oh, next week? He's probably got Julio back. He's got Kansas City. Heck yeah. Yes. Jameis Winston is on by half of his weeks. He's on by. <laughs> but uh, he's he's cut. He's, he's on waivers. He's coming back possibly with Michael Thomas, someone you could stash now. Hope that you get that uh, – Great New Orleans offense. Um, Matt Ryan has Miami, and then you know if if those guys aren't out there, Ryan Tana, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Have we could heard be back? Any Calvin Ridley updates? I know he had, he had the personal situation, so he missed the game. But I haven't heard anything yet. Have you guys seen anything? No. Okay. Nothing new. Um, wasn't an injury. Regarding for Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, not sure he's getting his job back. Yeah, he he very well might not. I mean, that one is not one I'm running to pick out, but those other guys are available in about 40% of leagues. So Tannehill's the number one target for the buy popular. Yes, he is. For sure, for sure. And Ab- getting him now costs you no fab. You you have to sign him next week on waiver day. You're going to have to spend on him. Absolutely. And at running back, um, this is more difficult because running back is is sparse. The guys that are out there, guys like J.D. McKissick, who's got Green Bay in Week 7, uh, the 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 New England backfield, Ramondre Stevenson, Brandon Bolden. You could take a look at those guys. The one name I wanted to bring up is Elijah Mitchell. He is on by this week. People might have to drop him. He hasn't done much, and he's not playing. If he is dropped, pick him up because we looked this up. My name is Jeff Wilson, Jr., not expected to be back until late November. They will be back in uh, Indianapolis. And Michael Carter also on by this week uh, should be you know on waivers and is so those, playing next week. To be clear, those are potential fill-ins for Eckler, Zeke, Dalvin, Najee, J-Rob, uh, Zach Moss, if they're parts of your lineup. And then on uh, the wide receivers, no Diggs, no Sanders, no Cooper, no Lamb. No Justin Jefferson, no Thielen, no Deontay, no Claypool, Oof, oh my no Mike goodness. Williams, no Keenan, no Marvin, no LaVisca. I have Marvin, and I was like, didn't realize he was on by mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago going, oh, he'll fill in for my my starters, and no, he won't. You know the scene in The Dark Knight where uh, the Joker uh, breaks the pool cue in half, and he throws it <laughs> down to the- tryouts. <laughs> yes, and he throws it to the two guys. It's like- Yes. <laughs> you, one of you has to kill yeah. the other. That's what waivers will be at wide receiver next week. And we're, we're simply giving you the pool cue. Yeah. We're trying to give you a way <laughs> out. Like, you want to leave the room before he throws the pool cue down? So, James Crowder, Brandon Ayuk. Those guys are going to be on a lot of waivers because they're on by this week. Um, I, I know Ayuk, I, I said I would cut him. That's fine. He, he doesn't need to be rostered. Um, but if you have the ability to, to hold him, and he was cut, coming in next week, no George Kittle. Um but uh, T.Y. Houston, maybe this week, uh, T.Y. Hilton is another name who should be back by week seven uh, if he's not back this week. Look at those guys now and prepare for the Bipocalypse. And then at tight end, uh, you got uh, Dawson Knox and Dalton Schultz, the the waiver wire heroes that will be gone. Ricky Seals-Jones, we'll talk about him later. He would be my pickup Agreed. of the week. 
Um, and I guess we'll throw in some defenses too. Don't ask about kickers. I ain't doing that. We'll wait till the end of the show. But the Cardinals and the Patriots defense, um, they've got uh, bad matchups this week. But in week seven, the Houston Texans, the New York Jets respectively. Go look at waivers for next week today. All right. That is never not working. Brought to you by Head & Shoulders. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Now it's news time. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Kyler Murray was limited with a right shoulder injury uh, in practice on Wednesday. He didn't miss any snaps in week five. Uh, he grabbed at his upper right arm at one point during the game. I think that the uh, – just be careful not to swing the pendulum too far here with, like, PTSD from last year. Yeah, but I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it, but I don't think anything's wrong. I, I Significantly wrong. That's my take. You guys have a different opinion. I'm not freaking out about Kyla Murray. I'm not freaking out, but I did bring up on Spotify Green Room last night that he is someone that I would maybe try to sell high on. If you can get a haul, Andy, you brought up you've never regretted getting a haul for a stud quarterback. You traded Patrick Mahomes for a haul plus Justin Herbert a couple of weeks ago. That's been great. Um, I mentioned yes. maybe targeting like a like a Jalen Hurts plus other important pieces where you're fine at quarterback, but you're adding a running back you're adding a wide receiver just because if he is injured more than you think obviously we know the starting uh center Rodney Hudson is going to be out tough matchup maybe just capitalize now but I agree with you this isn't like a oh no the world's on fire get rid of Kyler Murray but if you can if you can get a haul I would Hopkins missed practice due to an illness we'll keep you updated Dalvin Cook limited on Wednesday that's a good sign yes uh, he had not been practicing. And ironically, Alexander Madison didn't practice at all because mm. of his shoulder injury. So um, Dalvin Cook, I would expect him back out there this week. Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen didn't practice. It could it's be right. maintenance days. We'll find out soon enough. It was just Dalvin Cook running some laps by himself. <laughs> yeah. the, the Vikings weren't there. Christian McCaffrey. Matt Rule says he's 50-50 to play. Doesn't sound 50-50 when you hear the 50-50 report. It doesn't. Because you need... To put him back out there and risk anything is just not mm. worthwhile for this team with the record that they have. So you need to go into the week, I think, believing that Christian McCaffrey's 100% to go to put him out there if I'm if I'm that team. And I think we, we think Matt Rule's a smart guy. So I wouldn't put a 50-50 Christian McCaffrey back out there. All I know is they're three and two, and they won three games with him, and they lost two games without him. That's fair. So get back out there, Christian. Mike Williams, non-participant. Uh, Al Robinson didn't practice with an ankle. T.J. Hawkinson didn't practice. Darren Waller didn't practice. Of those four names, Hawkinson. Hawkinson's probably the biggest concern. Yep, Hawkinson is the biggest concern. He struggled with the knee injury uh, for the last couple of weeks. You got the report that he uh, hopefully will play last week, and he did, but he hasn't been doing great. For fantasy since this knee injury popped up. So it's bad to see him not practicing. Giants, uh, Sterling Shepard, limited. Kadarius Tony limited. Shepard has said he will he will be back. <laughs> I just, just – Oh, he, he scoffs at his Shepard. No, I, I only scoff because it's the player saying that, so it doesn't always mean what. Yeah. We've heard it before, go the other direction. But, yeah, the, the, all signs point to Shepard being back. And uh, Damian Harris did not practice. Beat reporters out of New England this morning believe that he'll miss the game. Uh, Melvin Gordon missed Wednesday's practice due to a hip injury. M just a small comment, uh, Mike Boone is active and back. Hmm. The free agent addition for the Broncos. So he will take some snaps from Javante. Oh. Denver, don't do that to us. It'll happen. Don't. Denver. Because you want to see Javante run wild. Yes, I do. And if you – I mean, like you could – you can play both Gordon and Javante right now, but you're not you're not getting what you want out of either player. And if you add Mike Boone into this, <sighs> that will be sad. I feel like Jason is making some waiver wire adjustments. I might just be looking at <laughs> what I'm bidding on Ramondre Stevenson. It might or might not be. Uh, Julio Jones returned to practice. Uh, I, I saw some people that were 
at practice saying he looked good. Tua, Tunga Vailoa, after getting ribbled, Ooh, expected, got ribbled? expected to suit up. All right. Uh, in Jack uh, against Jacksonville in London, barring setbacks. So maybe a glimmer of hope for this offense in Miami. Any other updates you've heard, Brooks, before we move on? Nothing yet. All right, that was today's news and notes. We'll let you know if, if something happens over the next hour, some of the teams getting out there for practice. Uh, make sure you grab the Sleeper app. They're the leader in breaking news alerts. They will let you know what's going on as well. Subscribe to the Breaking Alerts channel after you download the app. Let's get into the forecast. Fantasy Forecast. Guess that means I'm not getting Ramondre Stevenson. Probably not because you spent all of your fab on the, the missile, the missile earlier this year. Yeah. So I would just delete. Why didn't your... he get picked up in our league yesterday? That's what I want to know. Uh, he was on my pickups, but he was below some guys that I got ahead of him. Yeah, yeah. This is this is. I wish that I had talked about the Damian Harris news. Like I don't know, nine minutes, nine from minutes now? from now. <laughs> did you have any bid in on him? I had a bid. just now. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you stupid show. That's stupid podcast. Ruining my game. Mm -hmm. um, London, we get to do it again. You guys excited to get up early? All right. Now, Mike, you're doing your uh, Sunday Live before the London game, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, tune in uh, <laughs> 4 a.m. <laughs> Pacific. The Dolphins at 1-4 and four taking on the 0-5 Jacksonville Jaguars. Dolphins minus three. That's the DraftKings Sportsbook line. Over-under is 47. Jason, what stadium are they in again? Oh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait. I'm coming from Ireland. <laughs> okay, to see the, it's near <laughs> enough that I'm going to come and see this game in London town. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> now we need more London games. I, I, I'm I, glad you knew that was Irish. Um, Is Jacksonville going to win this game? Probably not. Okay. Not with Tua coming back. No, probably not. But uh, there is some... Juicy fantasy opportunities in this game just because the defenses are so bad. I mean, the Miami defense, we spent years saying that they built this team the right way. What's going on? I mean, 27th against quarterbacks, 31st against running backs, 28th against wideouts. It's the curse of benching Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, great. That's what you get, Miami. Oh, wait. That's happening to Washington's defense right now. Oh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. What does oh, he man. do to, to what does he disarm like the defense's animosity? Are they so? I don't know, but this it's just this is now a trend. Pure karma. Wow. All right, so I like Trevor Lawrence in this game. Yeah, he was a top ten quarterback last week. We'll talk about him later. James Robinson is a must start every week right now, especially against Miami. I mean, he is. He had a career game last week, and he he could have gotten even better if he had another goal line carry. But he is so safe right now at the running back position. The real throw your hands up and just play them, I guess, is Marvin Jones and LaVisca Chenault because – Can they, can you? I think you can. I think you yeah. can. I think Andy is I right. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> if I'm going to choose one of these two guys, it's going to be Marvin Jones over Visca because we saw with LaVisca changing how he's playing since the DJ Chark injury, I'm not as convinced he's going to have manufactured touches. And while he is explosive and could certainly do great things with it where you can put him in your lineup, we have a lot of history from Marvin Jones knowing he is a great NFL wide receiver. He has not gotten the targets, has not gotten it done the last couple weeks. But in the end... He is the best wide receiver they have in a winnable matchup where I you know the 47 and a half point over under you could it's a good line if if the offenses do anything in these games I I could see it going back and forth in this matchup the defenses haven't been good so I think Marvin Jones is someone you can throw in your flex um and hope now it's worth noting because this game, if you're on the West Coast, it's probably starting before you even wake up. If you're, It's starting in five minutes. If you're going to play Marvin Jones, put him in your wide receiver slot. Sure. Uh, just like Thursday night players so that you have that flexibility later in the day, the afternoon, the evening games. Yeah, Tua returning could bring a little bit of hope of that over getting hit and this game being more of a shootout than a blowout. Dan Arnold, I think you can play him at tight end. Uh, very involved last week in his first kind of full week, not a short week after the trade. And then on the other side, uh, you know, are you rolling Miles Gaskin back out there because of the 
Jacksonville matchup and the fact that he had a big week, it seems hard not to. Yeah, it does. I, I think the matchup says you can rely on Gaskin. The 10 targets uh, are good. Obviously, there's a quarterback shift here. So, for instance, I'm really curious, maybe skeptical is the right word, as to whether or not you can start Mike Gesicki. He's been great. The matchup is great. So it's like, okay, keep rolling with, with Gesicki, except when those targets started coming was when Tua went down and Brissett came in. Um, so there is there is shifting. You know, I, I think we all three have starts of the week right now uh, that are somewhat available, and I would start them over Gesicki despite how well he has been just because of the quarterback shift. No confidence at wide receiver right now with Miami. Jalen Waddell has been not good and Devontae Parker did not practice on Wednesday, missed last week. That would be my saving grace for Gesicki confidence, is if they're still limited at wide receiver mm -hmm. this week, then he'll become necessary. For like, Gaskin, too. Yeah, for Gaskin. Um, Green Bay, 4-1, and one, taking on the Chicago Bears, 3-2 and two in Chicago. DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Packers minus 4. Over-under is 44 points. It's kind of a messy game. I mean, the Bears' defense has been really solid this year. They've given up a couple big plays, but fifth against quarterbacks, tenth against running backs, sixth against tight ends. The wide receiver position, it's not like you were deciding on Devontae Adams here. Uh, he'd be the only wideout I'd start for Green Bay. Mm -hmm. Is this a pretty straightforward matchup to, to project? Yeah, it really, really is. There are basically three players you're playing – when looking at both sides of the game. I mean, Rodgers is in your lineup because mm -hmm. he's Aaron Rodgers, Devontae obviously, and an Aaron Jones you can rely on. A.J. Dillon has been creeping towards flex appeal, um, but I don't think he has it in a matchup against Chicago in a divisional game. And then on the other side of the ball, I, I'm i not touching the Bears. Oh, I'm playing Damian. Oh, I guess, I guess Damian Williams, sure. yes. Sure, Damian Williams. And people picked up Khalil Herbert. They need to know whether they can start – um, him. It's just it's really tough to trust an offense that you're not confident can score enough points on the I field. I don't think Allen Robinson's going to miss the game. I mean, he has been a an Iron Man over the last few years. But if he did, I'd be willing to roll Ooh. the dice with Darnell Mooney. That being said, I don't think he's going to miss. So this game becomes more simple. I so, think uh, Mooney is. Mooney's interesting from the standpoint of game script, where the Chicago Bears have been very run heavy. Like they get a lead, they sit on the ball, and they just hand it off over and over. It sometimes game scripts don't go the way you think, because uh, on paper that's this is very easy that the Green Bay Packers are going to be up. But if that does happen, as I would project that the Packers are able to score points, they will have no choice but to throw a little bit more. And thus far, the connection of the quarterback is, for Justin Fields, the rookie, that connection is with Darnell Mooney. I think that Mooney is worth a uh, – he's a, worth a flex play to me. Would you – let's say Allen Robinson – I'm not playing Robinson. Let's say Allen Robinson is out. I'm not playing either of these guys personally, but I'm curious what you guys are talking about. Mooney being someone you could play, especially if Allen Robinson was out. Would you play Mooney or Jacoby Myers against Dallas? Ooh. Probably Jacoby. Yeah, I'd lean Jacoby Myers. Okay, yeah. so that's the level I mean, Mo of... Mooney's been seven or more targets three times. He's a week removed from 125 yards, and so if Robinson was gone and a blowout, I could see it working for him. He hasn't scored this year. Not that Jacoby Myers has ever scored, but he um, seems safer to play Myers. Um, I would play Mooney over, like, LaVisca Chenault. Over Beckham? <sighs> Dude. <laughs> Beckham just literally... Oh. Back. Last week was the worst of all of it because they scored 42 points and he was two for 20. Like he was a hundred percent disappearing. Like it was, Beckham was not involved. Yeah. He's not involved. Um, I, the, the, his the, name should be Tim Patrick. The way that it that would is make it set up, <laughs> uh, the way it's set up Cleveland. Uh, I would project them. They'll be able to control the ball and we we're we're uh, still a few days out. But at least weather-wise, we're starting to get into that area of the year where you at least have to consider it. And it sounds like a little bit wind, which in Cleveland, which would be it's not like you abandon all your skill players because of wind. But you might say, well, there's I'm going to ten percent. I'm going to move these guys down ten percent, yeah. and that might be enough to change your decision. And I don't 
I don't like to speak well of Odell Beckham for fantasy, <laughs> but I do think there is a, a situation where last week was a game of happenstance where they were running the ball really, really well, um, and they had a couple of giant breakaway plays from David and Joku sure. that just took the passing work away from you know other options. So the week prior, Odell looked okay, but the we the weather is is worth at least uh, <clears throat> at least bringing up. All right, before we get to the Cincinnati Bengals Detroit Lions game, want to thank today's sponsors. Babbel is here. If you are going to a destination where maybe you don't know the language, it could be challenging to do just about anything. The simplest tasks: how to order, how to read a menu, how to you know find the restroom and Babbel is a travel essential I uh have Babbel I've signed up we're working on uh the old Espanol That's in right. Arizona a lot of Spanish speakers uh really valuable to be able to speak another language at Babbel's 15 minute lesson plans make it really er easy to learn on the go um these things are handmade by over 100 language experts they're not AI lesson plans that a robot made. They are scientifically proven to be effective, and they have 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel in addition to the lessons, podcasts, games, videos, stories, even live classes. So right now, check them out. When you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALLERS. Babbel. It's language for life. And Foot Clan, we want to thank today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. If you are on the internet, you got to protect yourself. And you're like, well, I'll just, I'm going to fire up in an incognito mode. That doesn't stop your service provider from seeing what you're doing, and it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who your internet service provider is. ISPs in the United States can legally sell your information to ad companies. That's why you need a VPN. ExpressVPN, it's an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so that your ISP, they can't see the sites that you're visiting. ExpressVPN also keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the time, you don't even realize you have ExpressVPN Express on. It runs seamlessly in the background. It's easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you are protected. And you can use this on phones, computers, even your smart TV. There's no excuse. But you, all, you protect yourselves in, in other ways. you got to protect yourself online as well. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET. Visit our exclusive link, expressive or expressvpn.com slash footballers. And you can get an extra three months for free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash footballers. Expressvpn.com slash footballers to learn more. All right, the Cincinnati Bengals at 3-2 and two travel to Detroit to take on the 0-5 Lions. The DK Sportsbook line here is Bengals minus three and a half. Over under is 48. I'm a little scared of this game uh, because Cincinnati is an enigma right now. They Their games have hit the under in four straight. They rank 30th in plays per game. I'm not playing sure, slow. I'm not sure what they're going to need to do here. I mean, the, the, the Lions offense has scored 17 or fewer points three straight weeks. And the Bengals' defense has been so improved. Uh, you know, they're middle of the pack against the major positions, fourth against tight ends. And I just wonder if this is going to be one of those games that we look at and we say, wow, I've got confidence in Chase and Higgins and Boyd and, uh, you know, they're, they're road favorites. But maybe they try to control the clock with Joe Mixon. I hurt Joe Mixon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I it's going to be an interesting. I I agree with you Andy. There there is definitely the potential for disappointment here. You could have a lower scoring game um just like you've seen with a lot of these Cincinnati games over the last couple of weeks. That being said, there are really good fantasy options in this game. Even if it is a low scoring game. I mean, we've seen um these 17 point week after week after week uh performances with the Lions result in good fantasy matchups. Um, so I think it's going to happen again. First of all, you've got DeAndre Swift on the Lions side, which you've got to play. Mm -hmm. The uh, Cincinnati Bengals 
are allowing the highest opponent running back target share in the NFL. So that's where Swift lives. That's, you know, he is the PPR, the target guy. You lost Cephas. I think DeAndre Swift was is just an unbelievably great play. In fact, I was Andy's almost upset of the week. I could see him wanting to hit that button. He All just right. he needed it. Um th so this game is one that you are predicting uh the Lions get their maybe their first win. Yeah, I mean I, I think almost I think Detroit I mean Detroit has been on the edge of success multiple times. You see Dan Campbell after that loss? Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. how emotional he was? I did not. He was, he was crying. He was crying. Conference. This oh, man really? for wants, his team. He wants to win. And, I love it. You know, he can bite. You can bite kneecaps and you can cry at the same time. Yes, you can. That's manhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm sorry. Ar, 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 they should have won last week. They should have won against Baltimore. They're going to win this week at home. They're going to fight. I, I and, yeah. and you were making such a compelling argument about Swift. I had to hit the button. I could I could see it. I was I had a really hard time deciding who my start of the week was between the running backs on either side of the ball for this game because both of them are just such a great matchup. Uh, Joe Mixon against the Lions, Swift against the Bengals. I think it, it, it pairs up really nicely for fantasy. Yeah, I know, Mike, you are into Burrow this week. I, yes. am, I am more reserved about this game, but we'll talk more about Burrow in a bitski. Amon Ross St. Brown, eight targets in back-to-back -back weeks, last man standing at the wide receiver position. An interesting desperation play he's also who i ended up with in our waiver wire moments ago when uh, mike outbid jason by a considerable amount for ramondre stevenson I figured and then uh i also who was i going for oh you picked up brandon Ayuk, jason congratulations thank you uh getting ready for the bipocalypse i guess that is what it is i just said it on the show nope. he, he's on bye week hit the waivers and i've got no amari cooper next week well, I was certainly going to feel more confident with an Ayuk desperation play if Jimmy Garoppolo is the quarterback. That is going to make a huge difference to me. TJ Hawkinson didn't practice on Wednesday. It's not a fun fantasy football situation no, for managers not. of TJ Hawkinson because you're dealing with underwhelming play and under a lack of confidence in the knee. You know, it's it's been coverage going his way. Yeah, and, and tough opponent. Yeah, the the Bengals haven't given up much to the tight end position. Um, he is in you know dealing with a knee injury, and with Cephas out, the defense can really lock in on him. I think Hawkinson's going to be great the rest of the season. I really, really still do. But if you have the ability to start one of these other guys that we're going to be talking about in a little bit, keep Hawkinson. I I think I would be willing to look at Dan at, Arnold. Dan Arnold's right on that cusp where I'd probably still go. Um, Zach Ertz. Yeah, Zach Ertz. I would, Ricky Seals-Jones. Those two I would play over him. Not cut Hawkinson for them. Hunter Henry. Oh, he's so funny. Hunter Henry's been good for a couple he's of weeks in a jokes. row. <laughs> yes, he's got good jokes. Good sense know. of humor. Um, uh, no, but I think I think Seals-Jones and, uh, and Zach Ertz, I would, I would be willing to – sit Hawkins and not cut him obviously um and and try to get a few more points this week it's not doesn't look like a great week for Hawk anything to add Mike not on the Hawkins side, just of the <sighs> Jamar Chase is in your lineup oh yes yes Houston Texans one and four taking on the one and four Colts I guess uh, the, back to the Bengals real quick are you playing T Higgins with confidence no because of the injury the the way that he kind of re-aggravated at mid-game even if he's active i i worry that it keeps popping up so then are you, you don't worry about that with mixon then uh well i'm with, worried about mixon i'm i'm not worried about it with mixon because p ryan is gone and it, this is something where you saw him last week and even though his utilization was only on the field like 20 percent of snaps he didn't look bad like he had some some solid runs in the game his cut for the touchdown was delightful yeah exactly so i'm, I'm not i'm not worried about mixing at all the texans the colts both teams one and four the games in indianapolis DraftKings sportsbook line colts minus 10 at home after the texans put a big scare into new england last week over under is a disgusting 43 points and i'd take the over would you i would yeah hmm. the the colts defense you think davis mills can get it done again 
he looked good enough last week and the Colts defense hasn't been great. And I, I think that they're, I think that this will hit the over. Interesting. I like the Colts minus the points. Um, I think their defense, this is their time to step up at home. You got Jonathan Taylor coming off a, a wild Monday night game. He's confidently started. Michael Pittman, I think you stay in the flames with him. He's had six plus receptions in four straight games. He seems very, very solid, especially in PPR formats. T.Y. Houston, I mean, <laughs> they call him that for a reason. I mean, the jokes around Indianapolis right now is, hey, I don't think it's a coincidence he's ready to go at home against Houston because he's just <laughs> his, his he healed up. It's faster. It's not like the reporters. It's the players, the team, the coach. Yeah, Frank Reich was talking about it. Like they all know. He's like, oh man, we should get him out here because he always he always torches uh, Houston. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't play him though. I no, don't, I don't think I have any confidence to to ride that narrative. Week one with a neck injury coming back, I probably have better options. It's not by apocalypse yet. I need him to pass the. Houston moniker over to Michael Pittman. Yeah, Michael Houston. Sure, mm. it does. It's it's not as catchy. No. But I'm saying I would really love for Pittman to destroy this team. Mo Ali Cox, uh, he's been involved. I don't know if they'll need him this week personally uh, in a game with Jonathan Taylor running wild. But that that's kind of been the narrative for a lot of teams against the Texans. As you wonder, will they even? need to throw the ball but they have given up so many touchdowns to the tight end position mm -hmm. um that they are last place <laughs> yes all right the other side of the ball brandon mm -hmm. cooks has had a couple of soft weeks i am I, targeting him right now in trades he's already got the stink of the texans yes and when you have a couple bad weeks and that rookie you might be able to target him yeah, and after, get him at a value. After his start, those three great weeks, at that point we talked about I'm probably benching Brandon Cooks for two weeks because we knew the schedule. Buffalo looked amazing, and the New England Patriots are going to take out the number one option, and he had bad back-to-back -back weeks, but I think he's fine. He obviously is a good player. He's the number one target. We'll talk about him in a little bit. All right. Anything else to add? To this game, it doesn't look like it to me. Nope. The Rams at four and one take on the one and four Giants. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Rams minus nine and a half. Over unders forty eight and a half. Look, the Giants are under twenty implied points in this game. They lost Daniel Jones last week. They lost Kenny Galladay last week. They lost Saquon Barkley last week. They lost Kadarius Tony to injury on and off the field. There's not a lot, not a lot to like there. And Devontae Booker was the big spin. You know, in the in the waiver wire, and he will have volume, plenty of it, but not a big ceiling. Not a big ceiling. I think I think it does make a big difference as to what quarterback is starting here for the Giants for for literally the entire side of the ball. And it makes sense, obviously. Your team is better with a better quarterback. But if Daniel Jones right now he did not practice on Wednesday, but reports say he's progressing and on track to maybe clear the the protocol. Mm -hmm. If he is starting, that makes me more confident in Devontae Booker, more confident in Kadarius Tony, more confident in Sterling Shepard. Guys that if you know, if, if Glennon is the quarterback, I am very afraid. I realize Tony can do things completely on his own, break away, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, yards after the catch, but I'm hesitant to play any of the receiving options with Mike Glennon. I uh, Look, the Giants' defense is not good. It's 24th or worst against every position. I love Daryl Henderson. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh, in this game, and Cooper Cup and Robert Woods are both comfortable plays. Tyler Higby, I think if you've been starting him, you probably keep starting him and hope for those touchdowns to continue. He has ping-ponged between top 10 weeks and bad weeks, but tight end is a, a tricky one. Is this a week you're willing to flex Van Jefferson? I just don't think you could. It's just... No. It's like one in... He's like Fulton Reed out there. I mean, it's one in five. It's two in five right now. Okay. So no is my answer. Okay. it's That's more than Robert Woods. Uh, yeah, but the the difference is they build the game plan to involve Robert Woods, and they did it last week, and I don't know if you can bench 12 for 150. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying to bench Robert Woods. Okay. I'm just saying that Van Jefferson's had 
You said two really big weeks. Yeah, and it, to me, it's a matter of – so, obviously, we saw week one, Van Jefferson was, like, the very beginning of the game. Like, mm -hmm. Just complete surprise. I would assume that Van Jefferson would be more needed in a game where the other team is scoring a lot of points. His other good week was against Arizona, who put up 37 points. They had to really throw the ball a lot, and Van Jefferson was more utilized. Against the Giants, if it doesn't happen early, I would expect them to have a lead, and then Van Jefferson is not worthy of this matchup. Kansas City, two and three. Kansas City taking on the Washington football team at two and three in Washington. Oh, same record. <laughs> the DraftKings Sportsbook line: Chiefs minus six and a half. Over under is fifty six and a half. That's big time. Uh, that's because the Chiefs' defense, or lack thereof, combined with their offense, means that you're going to have some points on the board. Mahomes. Tyreek and, and Kelsey are auto starts every week, but Daryl Williams is the interesting name to mention here where he is a solid running back to play to me. Would you play him or Devontae Booker? Let's Daniel let's say Daniel Jones is in. You're going Booker or Daryl Williams? I, I, I lean Williams slightly. I do as well. Would you play Daryl Williams or Jamal Williams? I lean Daryl Williams. I do as well. Miles Gaskin or Daryl Williams? I think I'll stick with Daryl. Okay, mm. so he sounds like he's pretty, pretty locked, locked in. in. Yeah. I love Michael Keaton. <laughs> Look, Antonio Gibson on the other side at running back, you know, there's these reports about the uh, stress fracture in the shin, but the two games since the reports, he's been great. And he's still – he's right on the edge of running back one territory. He scored three touchdowns over the last two games. He says that the pain is not significant at all with the injury. So I'm I'm becoming less freaked out about this injury That's with, good. with Antonio Gibson. Uh, this, it, this but game, J.D. McKissick could end up out there a ton because of the, the game flow. This game is one where uh, I just expect – massive massive points i mean obviously the over under is 56 and a half it's the highest of the week is this like the highest of the year i, I, don't, I don't know maybe maybe I think not we've but, seen this before um it's it's one of those games where taylor heineke um has he had a really poo poo game last week but this defense has yeah, been so, the, the so saints are good bad yeah the saints are a really good defense the chiefs have been so bad chris jones Full did not participate again in practice. I would not expect him to be out there. They need him desperately. They don't have him. Him being, uh, you know, a defensive star for the Kansas City Chiefs. So, I think Washington's going to put up points, and Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes coming in off a loss, two and three against this putrid football team defense, cursed by benching Ryan Fitzpatrick, regardless of injury. Um. Yeah, I, I want pieces in this game, what do left, you think right, of, and center. What do you think about McCall Hardman? He was really involved this last week, 12 targets, 9 for 76. He's run the second most routes on the team at the wide receiver position. He could absolutely have a good game. I'm probably not going to start him in a home league in a, in a redraft. If you want to take a shot at you know a DFS lineup with him in it, sure. The reason I'm not is just simply because, and I said this when they signed Josh Gordon, it's that I don't believe in Josh Gordon, but I do think he'll be involved enough to just simply make it to where Demarcus Robinson, Nicole Hardman, like those guys are now harder to start and rely on because there is another mouth there that could just end up with the catches. Would you play McCole Hardman or on the other side, guys that I think are interesting, you have either De'Ami Brown, the rookie, plays, which that's we don't know yet. We don't know if, if Brown is going to play. But if he doesn't play, DeAndre Carter, who we, we talked about him a little bit on the waiver show, he showed up uh, just seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, it seems to have the confidence already of Coach Rivera. But last week against the Saints, he had eight targets, four for 62. 20% target market share last week. We we, we were laughing while watching because Andrew Siciliano kept yes. calling him De'Ami Brown. We're like, he's active? And then it was like, no, it was, it was Carter. But he had a lot of targets. He was – looked to and Rivera was speaking very very highly mm -hmm. of him um so he's interesting but I'm not I'm not necessarily starting so but I'm saying hit Carter or Hardman I would go Hardman I, I would rather tie myself to Patrick Mahomes I mean if this is a DFS lineup obviously and value comes into play Carter is a 
$3,000 basement wide receiver kind of shot in the dark uh, that you that you could take if Deami Brown is out. And obviously smash play for Terry McLaurin. Oh, yes. oh yeah. And Taylor Heineke is a nice stream. I yeah, so. uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you you mentioned I believe Ricky Seals Jones had like 90 something percent of the snaps at tight end last week. Yeah, I, he was running a ton 99% of, of snaps. I think he ran one fewer route than Terry McLaurin. Yeah, he is he is in play and Andy you mentioned Eight JD targets. JD McKissick, I think that he is a, a flex play as well. So everybody. Yep. All right, the Vikings at 2 and 3 take on the 3 and 2 Carolina Panthers who have lost a couple in a row here. DraftKings Sportsbook line Vikings minus one and a half on the road. That tells oh. you everything you need to know about the trend here. Uh, over under is 45 and a half, but the Vikings are road favorites here. Dalvin wow. Cook, Dalvin Cook should be returning and Christian McCaffrey is much more 50, 50. In fact, I, if I'm a betting man, I'm betting he's sitting. So are, do you take the approach of McCaffrey active equals play, right? Yes, yes, 100%. I mean, I I have McCaffrey and I've got Hubbard. That's just one player. Whoever is active will be in my lineup, and I really hope it's McCaffrey. DJ Moore, you play him, but beyond DJ Moore, the confidence in Robbie Anderson is zilch. Terrace Marshall hasn't really done a lot. So is it is it really McCaffrey and DJ Moore and no one else? Yep. I Pretty think, easy. I think so. I do think Sam Darnold is, you know, th this this is a game where at home um, he could be a fine stream. I think there are other options like Heineke that are widely available. I would play over him, but in a two quarterback league, the you know, you you could do worse than Sam Darnold. Uh, Kirk Cousins on the road. Is he on your bench? <sighs> Man. I was going to say, are you playing Sam Darnold or are you playing Kirk Cousins? I would rather play Kirk Cousins, but I mean, this, this I believe in the Carolina defense. I really, really do. I think they are fully legit. Um, it, I expect Alvin Cook to be back this week. And so um, this could be a game. Maybe we see a, a more defensive minded, uh, lower scoring game. If Christian McCaffrey is out and Carolina's defense at home is legit, Maybe this ends up a kind of disappointing game where you've got DJ Moore, Dalvin Cook, and then Justin Jefferson, and you kind of move on. Would you, you play skittish on Thielen right now? Yes. Yeah, I am too. Uh, would you play one of these quarterbacks or Trevor Lawrence against Miami? I'd play Lawrence. Lawrence. Ryan Tannehill against Buffalo. Is Julio active? I believe. In no, the, I, I, in I, this I, scenario, I would he not is. play Ryan Tannehill okay. against Buffalo. I'd play Tannehill over these two. Okay, uh, so let's keep it going then. Carson Wentz against the Houston Texans or right. Cousins slash Darnold. I uh, agree with what Jason said earlier in this breakdown, which is that this game has the chance to hit the under and be a more defensive-minded game with two offenses that, you know, injuries are causing them to have some... Uh, sputter. Yeah, it's a sputter. Thank is, you, Jason. Is, That's the word I was looking for. Does Dalvin Cook being active affect how you believe in Kirk Cousins this week slightly yeah as in like you're are you more likely to play Cousins with Cook active or more likely to more likely to play him if Cook sits more likely if he's active Correct. okay yeah. he's definitely been better with Cook active I mean, that's how I feel about Darnold too I mean Darnold he had a nice week two weeks ago on rushing touchdowns and then he drops the 29th at the quarterback position and you look at the offense, and they gave the game away. They they seemed like they were in complete control of that yeah, game. They really did. And then you blinked, and turnovers, I mean, and yeah. If if Christian McCaffrey's active, that's seventy five receiving yards that go to Sam Darnold. All right, you can always find our rankings, the Start Sit tool, and a bunch of other resources on the website, thefantasyfootballers dot com. Communities join the foot dot com. Let's talk starts. Starts of the week. My quarterback start of the week. Turns out it was your stream of the week, Jason, which I found out after I put his name in here. So well, we're, there you in, go. we're in agreement on him. Trevor Lawrence uh, in London. He's been a top 12 quarterback twice this season, was number nine last week. Uh, that's the same amount of top 12 performances as Lamar and Stafford and Rodgers. Uh, he's averaging five rush attempts per game. They're using him around the goal line in that capacity. And the Miami defense, full regression. I mean, seriously, they're allowing second the second most points per drive, second most plays per game, second most 20-plus yard passes. Dan Arnold gives you a better 
uh, some more stability in the in the receiving game. So. Does does the postman deliver overseas? He does. Yeah, yeah. Oh. They don't take our stamps, but <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, he, he likes to travel. Yeah, uh, I I like it. I like Lawrence this week. I like Lawrence a lot. Um, I'm going with Taylor Heineke. You're going um, with my stream of the week. That's right. This, I see what's happening here. This is a good week to pick guys up off of waivers and play them. Taylor Heineke was the quarterback 12, the quarterback 9, the quarterback 5, and then played a really, really good New Orleans Saints defense, and now is playing a really, really bad Kansas City defense who has – the lowest sack rate in the NFL, no pass rush. Looks like they'll be without Chris Jones. Um, and it's the highest uh, over-under of the week. I, I said I want players in that game. I ain't lying. Taylor Heineke, I will start him happily over a lot of, you know, better NFL quarterbacks uh, this week. Kansas, just a quick aside, Kansas City is really the dream. Mm -hmm. because Currently, yes. Because when you're facing them, because you know they're going to score. Yep. You know, it's not just like you're facing a terrible defense, but then they have no offense whatsoever. Like Miami – Right now has no offense. Their defense is awful, but they have no offense, so you know you don't need to put points up. Heineke will be throwing the ball, and Heineke runs the ball. He's averaging over five mm -hmm. carries, twenty-five yards a game on the ground. Um, so you know he's going to have to throw against a bad defense. He will not run if you throw a prop debt bet down on him. All right, Mike. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like uh, wasn't Seattle like this last year? Right, where you just you wanted to target them with all your offensive players. All right, my my start of the week. I like Joe Burrow. A lot. I the Detroit secondary, uh, factually and scientifically speaking, they stink uh, at football. I don't know that the you know I'm sure that they have good hygiene there, but <laughs> on the football field they stink. Uh, they're seeing the highest percent of twenty plus uh, yard targets in the league. And guess who plays for the Cincinnati Bengals? The king of the deep touchdown right now, Jamar Chase. Joe Burrow is playing excellent football. His, he's completing 72% of his passes. And the past two weeks, we've seen the, the passing volume increase. 32 attempts against Jacksonville, 38 against Green Bay. He's healing up. I know he's uh, he's on voice rest right now. I don't know if you guys heard that for the throat. Is he really? Yes. He, wow. so he, but he'll be it good is to, comical to see yes. the injury report. It's so strange. Throat. Uh, but he'll be good to go. They're starting to ramp up the passing offense, and he has three elite options. He feels very safe because mm -hmm. he's been two or more touchdowns in every game. He's at like a 7.5% touchdown percentage this year. He's playing tremendous. <laughs> Jamar Chase will do Jamar, that to you. Yeah. Well, it's nice to know that you can make an entire week on like he can, he's had some pedestrian weeks, and then all of a sudden it's just one play and 70 yards later. All right, running back, I'm going Daryl Henderson. Uh the Rams, 10.5-point road favorites, 29-point implied total. They're going to roll the Giants. I mean, this is a, a smash matchup for Henderson. He just needs to stay on the darn field for the entire game. He's been in the teens the last couple of weeks, fantasy point-wise, 80-plus percent in the snaps this season. This could be um, this could be a top-five week for Daryl. Yeah, I like Daryl a lot this week. Uh, my start of the week at running back is Joe Mixon. Talked about him earlier we thought Cincinnati was going to be, you know, a heavy pass team in 2021. Like Cur they were the last two weeks? Yes. Yes, uh, continue. Well, they are still currently the sixth highest rush rate and second highest in neutral game scripts in the league. I don't expect Detroit to be out to a huge lead. Per Rich Rebar, 71.4% uh, of touchdowns allowed by the Lions so far have been scored by running backs. Mm. The next closest is 58% for the Raiders. Mixon's going to eat. Samaj P. Uh, P. Ryan is on the COVID list. He looked good last week from the ankle. So I, I think Joe Mixon is someone where uh, we talked about on Green Room. You're very confused. He hasn't been top 20 in a month. Um, and maybe you're considering because of the ankle, because he's been bad four weeks in a row, don't play him. I think you're fine against the Lions. And this start of the week, look, uh, the bye weeks are here. You may have to do this, so plug your nose. But I think that Latavius Murray is in play uh, against the Chargers. They've allowed the most rushing yards or – they're allowing the most rushing yards per game. Latavius Murray is unfortunately still the 1A at the running back position for the Baltimore Ravens, and the Chargers are seventh against the pass. I believe that the Ravens try to go back to a heavier run script, at least for this particular matchup, and Murray should be in line for a touchdown. All right, we're moving to wide receiver. Mm -hmm. My start of the week is the 26th wide receiver in fantasy football right now. 
Maybe you've heard of him. Stephon Diggs <laughs> might be the only shot to throw him in there. But sure. um, look, the air yards are piling up for him, but he has not been what people have expected. I mean, the high draft capital pick. Target totals were extraordinary last year. Emmanuel Sanders has come in. Dawson Knox has made the next step. Um, but this is the week. The Titans are ridiculously bad. And uh, look, if you're if you're hoping for this game to be more competitive, you can look to AJ Brown and Julio likely being back out there. Uh, I'm excited about Stephon Diggs this week. I think he finally gets back into the end zone. And the Buffalo offense, defense. I mean, they're they're the best team in football, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think it's. I think it's um, We're five and zero, oh, bro. It doesn't matter if oh, you play. Okay. If, if the if the Cardinals and the Bills played ten games, the Cardinals might take four of them. Um, the Bills are just outstanding on defense, outstanding on offense. My wide receiver start of the week. I'm going with Brandon Cooks. He has absolutely been cooking by the book. You got to oh, do the cooking it? by the book. Oh. You got to do the cooking by the book. You know you. Don't be lazy. The last two weeks, we know he's had down weeks, but he still has, I don't know if you know, a 34% target share on the season. That is. That's outrageous. That is. Yeah. Uh, that's Devontae Adams level uh, target share. The Colts secondary was lit up on Monday Night Football, 442 yards on the season. They are allowing the highest pass success rate in the NFL. They rank 25th against fantasy wide receivers. Go back to the Brandon Cooks Wells. Well, he is a good wide receiver in a good matchup. My wide receiver start, it's Chase Claypool. It's my guy. Yeah. It's been a really strange year for Chase Claypool. It feels like he has done absolutely nothing. That's just like perceptively, that's how it feels. And yet my dude's averaging over 85 yards a game. Like he's producing. He's been really good. And it just doesn't feel like it. But now you can. You you can play him with confidence moving forward. Seattle is allowing the third worst uh over three hundred passing yard game or three hundred passing yards per game. I get it. Big bun Big Ben is toasted. Big bun? Big bun. <laughs> Big, Big bun. Ben got the big oh, buns. No, Big Bun. <laughs> but uh I like Chase Claypool. Juju is out. The target share should be safe now for Claypool. All right. I, I like that. Call. I like him rest of the season. He's a target to yes. me right now. Um, Zach Ertz is my tight end start of the week. No Goddard. That is part of the pitch here. His catch percentage is yards per, that per is catch. That is the pitch. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> that's the pitch. Um, but I did look a little deeper into Ertz this year. It's nice to see the yards per catch up. It's nice to see the catch percentage up. And he'll be all right. I mean, that's the sell, too. That's his line. Like, if you look up the in the catalog, it's – you could – Grab yourself a Zach Ertz, and it's the, Zach it'll be Ertz, all right. I Zach Ertz has a higher target share than Dallas Goddard. Yeah, it's yeah. true. I, I also love the stat. Uh, it's one of the most predictive stats, which you just named, the yards per catch-up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? That's, that's what he said. He says, oh. nice to see the yards per catch-up. Oh, and, oh. Uh, delicious. Yeah, it's a really good stat. Big Buns loves catch-up. Uh, Tampa, Bay, <laughs> Tampa Bay has given up double digits to the tight end position every week. Oh, they can't stop. I mean, and the, you can't stop Zach Ertz. The thing is, is is you, you can only can't hope to contain him. You can't, you can't run on Tampa. You got to throw the ball. I like it. I like uh, starting Zach Ertz a lot. I believe I would go with this player over him though, Ricky Seals Jones. Um, he we just talked about it. Ninety nine percent of the snaps, he completely took over the Who Logan Thomas. Oh, 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 oh! I mean, how do you leave that out of a start of the week? Well, I just didn't. Um, the game has that crazy high over under. We talked uh, about how great it is to start against the Kansas City Chiefs, and I'm going to stack him with Heineke. I think he's going to be great. He saw eight targets, ran thirty six routes, has the utilization, and is a talented player. We've talked about Ricky Seals Jones in the past. Very good athlete. I think he's going to um, have a solid, solid fantasy game. He's one of those guys where you can pick him up off the waivers. Mm -hmm. He cannot get a touchdown, and you're fine. So if he gets a touchdown, he has a top week. And I'm going with a deep streamer this uh, at the start of the week for the tight end position. I've been trying to do this, uh, and we've had, we're, we're doing okay so far with our hit rate on these streamers. I clearly I prefer like Ricky and and uh, the postman and, and guys over this. But if you are in a deep league, Mo Ali Cox, Gigantor from the Indianapolis Colts. Gigantor. Yes, thank you. Houston has allowed 
top 10 points to the tight end position every single week. And not one of those games has been against Kelsey, Waller, or Andrews. That can it when you play those tight ends, it skews your the numbers that you gave up to the tight end position. But Houston's just they're just bad against tight ends. And uh, Mo Ali Cox has seen 40 plus yards the past two weeks. I think he is in play for a deep streamer. I think that's it for starts of the week. It is. Let's continue now the more story. Important things. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. After my dinner, I boarded a plane, heart set on Scotland, yelling Braveheart style, bare chested, go with the Browns, Chase McLaughlin. That was great. That was great. Thank you. We're, We're overseas now. We're, this is an international This is incredible. He showed, you, he showed an ability to distinguish between an Irish and Scottish accent. Mm -hmm. That was on today's show. Are you taking in the game? Like, are you going to the Miami game? Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Uh, without – I hey, will get the re rest of the matchups on tomorrow's episode. want to thank Pristine Auction. Devontae Adams signed Packers mini helmet 55 bucks right now. Ooh. Wait, where's that button? Nope, didn't work. <laughs> I got you. We got to get this thing fixed. Yeah. Uh, Deontay Johnson signed jersey, $50, pristineauction.com. Use the promo code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. Uh, no other updates today other than, I think, uh, Daniel Jones, non-contact participant in practice. Things looking positive for him to clear protocol and uh, Hopkins expected to go down as non-participant again due to illness. So anything else, Brooksy? That's it so far. All right. That'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you for supporting the show. Check out the community over at jointhefoot.com, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the football. Good luck. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>